Hello, welcome to uh, playoff week one or week fourteen, depending on how you look at it. Uh, I have to say my um, thing thingy I was using to record myself on uh, broke. Um, that's what happens when you take it into your work building full of power tools and you're pretty careless and clumsy anyway, and uh, try to film uh, the project you're working on. Uh, it's going to happen. So I'm recording this on my phone, which is uh, not great to say the least. Um, so I actually have to, I have to stare at the back of my phone because it doesn't even have a front-facing camera. So if right now you're looking at the ceiling, that that's why. Um, I also have to make this one quickly because I'm pretty sure this will blow up if I try to do too much with it. Um, but a uh, quick recap uh, of the final week of the regular season. Um, I was trying to figure out what math I got wrong. Because um, if you don't know by now, congratulations to me, Dante's Me Bro, newly named Feed Moncrief, because I was playing around on the app, and I found out I could edit the name from the app, and I wondered if it worked, and it did, and then I just kind of left it. Uh, but apparently it was good luck, because um, I, I squeaked out a victory. Um, no thanks to Brandon Marshall, who in a blowout loss was still trying to catch four-yard bombs, and nearly did. But still, uh, last-minute win on Monday Night Football. Um, but anyway, uh, since I'm making this quick, I, ha I have to blather a little less. Uh, so here's the standings. The Honey Badgers and Stony Jabronis, as already expected, are going in uh, to the playoffs from the Black Division. The Honey Badgers squeaked out the victory um, to get the bye week from the Black Division. Stony Jabronis are going in as the, high, uh, the next highest seeded from that division. Uh, and Feed Mongrief, newly named, is uh, the, the third. And... Uh, playoff seed or the fifth overall seed uh, into the playoffs. Uh, it hurts when I put uh, earned the bye at the su more successive victories over the Goofy Ridge Runners who go in to the playoffs. Uh, they're going to have to fight in week 14 as well. Kentucky Aardvarks, this is the part I got wrong, uh, have squeaked out the number six seed um, over Saxon B. Cutler who has, uh, who remains um, uh, struggling over the last weeks. I, I think he's got successive losses over the last three or four weeks. Anyway, um, either way, so what I got wrong is that I feel that Kentucky Arbox could catch up to Sex to be Cutler, but I thought there was really only one playoff seat available uh, because I didn't think, uh, I normally, I don't try to predict the point four because uh, it's harder to do. Um, either way, uh, by winning this week and Saxby Cutler losing, Kentucky Aardvarks actually equaled their record at 5-8, to eight, but also managed to raise above, rise above their point four total, 1,518 versus 1,485, so significantly as well. And that's how they squeaked into the sixth spot, freeing up a second spot in the playoffs, essentially, which is why I got the fifth seed and they got the sixth seed. I'm pretty sure on that. Um, so those are the six teams that are in the playoffs. The Texas Pugs, um, uh, Sanchez Butt Fumble, Saxby Cutler, and Not Jerry's Cowboy go into the consolation bracket for the consolation prize, whatever that is when I figure it out. Either way, keep playing. Um, and even uh, I was going to mention the two teams that are on bye weeks, uh, Ertz on Eifert and Honey Badgers. Set a lineup. I'm not sure it counts, but uh, Andy went to the trouble of signing up as up for that competition where we're only eligible if everyone, if no one fails to start a full roster. If anyone starts a, a player on bye, which is, there are not many at this point, but still, um, then it might kick us out. I'm not sure. Either way, set your roster just because, what else are you doing? Living? Working? Eh. Um, set your roster anyway, just because uh, since Andy went to the trouble, we may as well be sure not to eliminate ourselves, even though it's, it's a comp it's, uh, Low statistical probability will even get in, but we may as well. All right, so um, the two playoff games this week, well, it hurts when Eifert and the Honey Badgers get um, their, their well-deserved rest week, their bye week in round one. Uh, the two games will be Feed Moncrief, the fifth seed versus Stony Jabronis, uh, the fourth seed, which is no problem at all because I, I beat them last time. Um, the only problem is I beat them last time because they got cute because they didn't need the victory. I think that's why. And started Tyreek Hill, which they're not going to do again, uh, partly because he's on my bench. Uh, so I have to try and squeak past... Um, ah, yes, I remember this roster. 
Uh, Thomas Rawls, Jonathan Stewart, Antonio Brown, Tyler Eifert, and Mari Coop. Okay, so yeah, uh, that, that's uh, probably the result of that particular game. But still, competitive, make it to the playoffs, anything can happen. Um, I also feel like issuing an apology. I think I'm the lowest scoring team to make it into the playoffs, or out of all the teams, actually. Not all the teams, but out of all the contenders. Yeah, I'm the second lowest scoring team overall in points. Uh, because, well, uh, stuck with Russell Rawson, and then I've had three or four massive injuries. But um, I'm not going to put an asterisk on my victory at all, because I'm not that sorry. Uh, but I do feel like I squeaked in over some teams that were definitely uh, getting stronger over these last successive weeks, including Texas Pugs. Um, and not Jerry's Cowboys as well. Really don't deserve to be in last place in the division. Um, but I am happy to say I've made the playoffs in every year that we've had this league so far. And uh, I will never mention again the fact that I probably shouldn't have, so I thought I'd do it now. Uh, in the other game, the Kentucky Aardvarks, with their well-deserved playoff uh, place, and they're on the rise, going up against the Goofy Ridge Runners, who struggled last week, and that's why I squeaked into the playoffs. Uh, but they mostly uh, struggled, I think, because... Um, let me pull it up here. Uh, well, for one, um, the Jets seem to have quit playing football. Uh, if you watch that Monday night game, if Brandon Marshall tries, he might. Just couldn't put up more than eight because with Bryce Petty, who could. Um, also, Greg Olson continues to struggle. And while it was an interesting and probably a fair move uh, to play Cooks and Michael Thomas, Breeze failed to go off this week. Uh, the first week at home or anywhere, they hasn't um, at least given one of them significant fantasy production. Matt Forte also struggled in that Jets loss. Um, and Ezekiel Elliott, well, still putting up good numbers, not great numbers for him at 19, and that's because he was facing Minnesota, and even if it's not the best defense anymore, it was still able to stifle just slightly um, the production of the Dallas Cowboys, which brought his total down. Tom Brady for the Goofy Ridge Runners also struggled. Um, for numerous reasons, but mostly, I guess, because Gronk is out, and so his production suffered the last two weeks, and this week was worse so far. Presumably it will rise, especially with the emergence of Malcolm Mitchell, but um, still, uh, Goofy Ranger is entering <coughs> their playoff, uh, the first playoff week, probably looking worse than they have the entire rest of the season. <coughs> uh, just wondering. Uh, and they've actually lost their points lead. Uh, it hurts when I put. I've actually scored more points overall than anyone else. Uh, just squeaking it out here in the last week. Anyway, so Kentucky Aardvarks go up against the uh, um, uh, Goofy Ridge Runners, which is going to be a tight uh, and interesting uh, score to watch, I think, of the playoffs week. Uh, in the consolation bracket, not Jerry's Cowboys are going to face off the Sacks to be Cutler, who's going to achieve, uh, tend to achieve his first win. And I, I do think in a little while. Uh, Sanchez butt fumbles are going to go up against the Texas Pugs, uh, and they go on to play, their, divide their games based on who gets kicked out of the playoffs um, in the other two playoff games. So that's those are the only four games for next week. Uh, quick look uh, at last week, um, the deciding week, since we took it down to the wire, and I got in scoring lower than all the other contending teams, but again, just squeaked out over Goofy Ridge Runners because of the problems I've already mentioned. Stony Jabronis did beat the Texas Pugs, but only by 10 points, uh, which was a narrow victory. The Pugs really put up a good fight here in the last few weeks. Um, I looked at the numbers. They could not have done better. They could have got three or four extra points, but it wouldn't have put them over the top with their, with their um, bench players here. Um, and again, looking at the team that's really come on here lately, Taylor Gabriel was a, kind of a flyer there, but definitely worth it for the upside. And again, didn't hurt them in that fact. That's not why they lost. And um, it's Todd's girl, uh, which is the Rams, which is Jeff Fisher, who just got his contract extended for two years um, to continue to kill the fantasy production of that team, I guess. <coughs> I don't know. Uh, but... Uh, he seems to be the disappointment in the lineup. Even Will Fuller was able to put up 10 and now back fully healthy. And Devontae Parker had an extra two points, but like I say, it wouldn't have swung the victory. So it was certainly worth swinging with uh, Taylor Gabriel, who had such a big week last week. And that's when Eifert is 
uh, put up uh, once again a week of daily fantasy production by the numbers with 177 points. Uh, David Johnson, just take a minute to appreciate that. I mean, Melvin Gordon's doing it with a terrible offensive line and has been probably, uh, who who would he be? He'd be the Doug Martin of this year, the guy we know who's talented, but he was in a bad situation. We didn't know if he was going to put it together, drafted in the fourth or fifth round, something like that. Um, same as Doug Martin last year, but this year Melvin Gordon's really been putting up numbers. This week he, rose, he, he, he pulled his production back up after a slightly down week last week. But just everyone saying how good Andy's team is, and it's true, uh, in the latter half of the season, uh, and how good David Johnson is. But I was just looking through, and I was looking at receiving stats, and I realized that David Johnson got nine receptions for 91 yards and a touchdown, which is actually a better receiving stat than most other wide receivers throughout the league that we played this week. Not many got nine catches for 91 yards and a touchdown, and that's just receiving. So he's actually a number one wide receiver at this point, as well as a number one running back, which is just insane. And remember that after last week, he, uh, he dislocated his finger, or at least injured it. He's not even on the injury report, so I guess that turned out to be nothing. But still, um, that that's pretty good, especially for a player that fell to the ninth pick, if you remember, in our draft. So um, you can't get things right or wrong in a draft because you can't predict the future. But I think it's pretty clear anyone who picked one to eight got that one wrong. You should have been picking David Johnson because um, he's certainly uh, riding or carrying, uh, would carry any team uh, to the playoffs alone, I think. Now, outside of that, uh, the rest of Edith's and Eifert's roster is also um, exploding with Jordy Nelson putting the Packers on his back like he used to. It was the first time this year really doing it again. And Des Bryant putting up good numbers even when he didn't necessarily have to, uh, which also might account for some of the drop in um, Ezekiel Elliott's production in that game against Minnesota, I guess. That's where it shifted to. And the surprise return of Zach Ertz to fantasy prominence. So that's what the Kentucky are, but no, 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 sorry. Uh, Andy's on a bye week, but still. Uh, did not give Saxby Cutler a very good chance uh, of eking out his first win. And to be fair, he put up 121 points. So despite the fact they keep saying he hasn't put up many wins lately, his team is performing. And with a good play or solid play of Anquan Bolden, definitely some interesting and solid moves they've made. And with the loss of Alshon Jeffrey and again now finally Rob Gronkowski. And um, that's two very high picks that he lost. And Aaron Rodgers struggling this season. Um, so certainly no fault. Um, but uh, they've mounted up. Oops. Situations have mounted up. Whoa, okay. Uh, to really hamper sex to be cut up. Uh, Sanchez butt fumbles. Uh, only managed 78 points this week. Um, yeah, despite some really good flyers like per Paul Perkins. Suffered again from that New Orleans game not being quite what everyone hoped it would be. Um, with Willie Sneed putting up uh, five points. A uh, big disappointment in Jason Witten, who, like I said, up against a tougher defense, Dallas wasn't able to uh, provide quite as much fantasy production to all of its players anyway. And the Honey Badgers remain strong, as you'd expect from the team that um, earned that first round bye, um, but only managed to put up 100 points because of the struggles of Mike Evans, Vance, Smith, Donald not taking advantage of an opportunity, and apparently Blaine Gabbert might be starting again um, next week which is never a good thing. Um, mostly, um, it's the new fall of Devan Devontae Adams. I don't know if he's uh, what's going on there, but uh, a very solid uh, breakout season uh, has been derailed two of the last three weeks here, and this week it um, hurt the overall score, but I don't think the honey, <laughs> honey Badgers don't care, right? Especially in a week that he didn't have to win, and now he has a bye week. Not Jerry's Cowboys and Kentucky Aardvarks, but it's a very good game on both sides. But again, uh, Kentucky Aardvarks are just surging. And that's despite playing Kaepernick, who only put up two points, two whole fantasy points this week. So I guess that's over with. Again, Blaine Gabbert might be taking over. So you can imagine the rest of his roster went off pretty well, with Spence Ware, Jordan Howard, again, re-emerging as new potential number one running backs um, for coming seasons and for the playoff season here. T.Y. Hilton just making mincemeat of a Jets defense that didn't want anything to do with him. Uh, and DeAndre Hopkins still remaining strong, even if he wasn't, uh, isn't able to get what he did last year, again, because of a struggling uh, uh, Houston team and a hamper by Brock Osweiler. All right. 
the quickest rundown I can do. The waiver wire this week, you're on your own, okay? My phone's about to die, uh, and it's playoffs, so it's cutthroat at this point, right? Uh, so you can all go, uh, we can all go and fight with uh, for Ladius Green, I guess, uh, or um, Malcolm Mitchell's already picked up. Uh, what about that? The last time the Patriots had a good wide receiver is uh, Randy Moss. So that guy's going to be interesting moving forward and into next year. I think the knock on him, going back to what I read about him in the draft, was that he got hurt a lot in college. But so far, he dislocated his elbow in the preseason. But since that wasn't season ending or anything, obviously, since he's come back and been pretty spectacular here the last few weeks. Um, anyway, so uh, rough player news. Um, the wave wire is kind of thin anyway. Uh, and I don't want to take up your time telling you things, too many things that you already know. Congratulations to those who made the playoffs. Congratulations to those who made the consolation bracket because everyone has stayed with it this year. It literally went down to the very last week of competition before anyone knew who was in the playoffs. Uh, and that's a sign that everyone played well and kept up with the, uh, kept up with the um, uh, league. So keep doing that. Uh, we've only got a couple more weeks left of football, at least fantasy football. And then we've got a long, dry spell until next year. So, um, yeah, we may as well play it while we still have it. All right. Um, good luck to me, uh, of course. Bad luck to the Stony Jabronis. I'm sure you're all uh, rooting for them no, no, uh, to fail. Um, and good luck to the Oddbox and Goofy Bridge Runners, who uh, the teams locked this locked into this week a um, uh, uh, lose or fall. Uh, week as well. Every week uh, from here on out is uh, sudden death. All right. Um, I think it was. No, I think that's it. All right. So uh, if you're seeing this video, it's because it worked. Hey. Uh, and if not, then uh, it doesn't really matter, does it? Um, I'll talk to you again next week. Good luck in, in the playoff season, and uh, thanks everyone for sticking with it so well.